1963, McDonald's was a new name with a lot of upside potential. Friends of my grandpa Fleener saw the potential of a new up and coming restaurant concept. And multiple times they asked him to be on the bottom floor of this new hamburger place that they insisted would be a big hit. Well, after some back and forth with my grandma, he declined. He wasn't going to waste their money on the newest fad. For them, there was no prayer, no asking God, just a no. What if? What if my grandfather had invested the money? Where would we be as a family? Well, to be a circle maker, we can't live in the what ifs of life. Circle makers learn what God's plan is and they see it through. See, circle makers are history makers. They don't live in what ifs. You know, most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. And most of us don't get what we want because we quit circling. You know, we give up too easily. We give up too soon in our society. And we quit praying right before the miracle happens. See, circle makers are people of prayer. And they have learned the difference between praying for and praying through. Praying through intercedes until God intervenes. It's really what the old timers called praying through. It's like this. It's like the persistent widow who drove that judge crazy with her relentless requests. She kept coming back until he gave her what she was requesting. You see, praying through won't take no for an answer. I believe that our generation desperately needs to rediscover the difference between praying for and praying through. There are certainly circumstances where praying for something will get the job done. But you know what? There are also situations where we have to grab a hold of the horns of the altar and refuse to let go until God answers. Like Honey, we refuse to boo from the circle until God moves. And we intercede until God intervenes. You see, praying through is all about consistency. It's making a choice to circle Jericho so many times that it makes you dizzy. You see, circle makers know that it's always too soon to quit praying because you never know when the wall is about to fall. You're always one prayer away from the miracle happening in your life. So praying through is all about intensity. It's not quantitative, it's qualitative. You see, drawing prayer circles involves more than words. It's gut-wrenching groans and heartbreaking tears. It's praying through so that we bend God's ear and it touches the heart of our Heavenly Father. Tonight, let's take a second and stop the video. And I'm going to encourage you to open your Bibles and read Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And as a group, list the reasons you come up with on why God doesn't answer prayers in our timeline. Welcome back. So Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 8 says this. It says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. And he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Well, for some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? And will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. And however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Well, the reality is this, is that we do not always get immediate answers when we pray. But effective prayer takes tenacity, faithfulness, and obedience. You see, in today's society, we give up too easy, and we let things go before God's timing is right. You see, God can delay answers to our prayers for several reasons. One of those reasons could be is that God could be testing our commitment to Him and to what He has 
into what he has said to us. See, God teaches us to be a diligent seeker. Second is that God could be testing our faith. You know, I actually learned that my faith is stronger after God's initial silence sometimes in my life. And third is that God could be testing whether we really trust him. You know, sometimes he asks us to make the circle and trust in his perfect timing. You know, if we are really living for God's desire for our lives, it won't matter how long we have to wait. You know, when Israel was told to take the city of Jericho in after entering the promised land, God made an interesting statement to them. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, he says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. And then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. God here speaks in the past tense, not the future tense. He doesn't say, I will deliver. But listen, God says, I have delivered. The significance is this, is that the battle was won before the, ver- the, battle, was won before the battle ever began. And God had already given them the city. All they had to do was circle it. When was the last time you found yourself flat out in your face before the Almighty? When was the last time you cut off circulation kneeling before the Lord? When was the last time you pulled an all-nighter in prayer? Listen, there are higher heights and deeper depths in prayer. And God wants us to take us there. He wants to take us to places that we've never been before. There are new dialects. There are new dimensions. But if you want God to do something in your life, you can't do the same old thing. Listen, my house, it's time for us in our lives to start circling. May God bless you tonight in your discussion time and have a great time with us.